Did you ever get that ice cream flavor? The Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity? Rudy, yes, I do you know what Rudy Tootie means. I have no idea, but do I want to know if it associates with ice cream? Does it have anything to do with flavor? Yes. Oh, yeah, tell me. Rudy Tootie means all the flavors. Oh, what a cop out. What a <laughs> fucking cop out. I don't know what to name this. I'm just going to name it everything. Yeah. This is all we had left. Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to the refreshers. Mm. We're not called that refreshers. <laughs> I'm gonna get him with it, it one right. day. Oh my god! One day he's gonna. One day he's just gonna reset, be like, reset, "We're reset. the refreshers," and I'm gonna be like, "Yes, my mission is completed." Hmm. Welcome back to the resetters. We are the Rudy Tootie. We're rooting tootin'. We're the root rootin' tootin' reset. Wait, what is so what, what is that song what about? Do, anyway? What does rootin' tootin' mean then? Because um, that's such that's a old that's well, a like it depends if you're British or American because. In American, rooting means I'm supporting you. Yeah, rooting, I'm rooting, for, rooting you. for my team. Yeah. But in British terms, rooting means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm fucking yeah. Nice. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, nice. I'm I'm always rooting for you, Dan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? You think of me every time. I can't. Oh. I can't not. Sorry. What we're saying about um, Rudy Tootie? Yeah, Rudy Tootie. What? I I actually no, I lied. I have never have had that um flavor ice cream. So I don't I, know why I lied. I know that was such a weird thing to lie about. Yeah, I, of course they have. Uh, yeah, duh. No, we had a we had a very popular um, ice cream flavor from Ben and Jerry's called Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity, and the whole idea behind the the ice cream is it had bubble gum in it. Ah, oh, we have that in New Zealand, but it's called Goody Goody Gum Drops. Goody Goody Gum Drops. It was the worst fucking ice cream I have ever had in my life. What? I I hate it. Goody Gum Drop is my favorite. I I. I I'm a purist. I really like. You're talking to the guy that his favorite ice cream is vanilla flavored ice cream, but like a good oh. good flavored. So vanilla? you're talking about hokey pokey. That is a good. That is that's all hokey pokey is. It's just vanilla with and, little dots of caramel. Yeah, honey and honey caramel and mm. uh, yeah. No, I can't really deny the deliciousness of hokey pokey. I can't. Yeah. That's it's a very it's a very New Zealand thing. Not something that I learned about until I moved here. Yeah, apparently it's. You know, it's, it's the number one ice cream in New Zealand. And people come here and they love it, but apparently they just can't get a foothold overseas. Like nobody, it doesn't sell well. Like it's really easy to. Oh, oh, you mean like it just doesn't sell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's weird. It is a weird product when you think. I mean, it's honey or it's sugar um, exposed to bisodium carbonate. That that yeah. And I that, didn't think know that, but now I do think it is weird since you said that. Yeah, that's it. And it's why just, did they expose the sugar to sodium bicarbonate? Just just to get it. Why would fluffy? you do that? They want uh, fluffy sugar. Okay. Well, that that's the idea. Like, um, <laughs> and the the problem the problem with people the problem with some people who are uh, sodium bicarbonate like um, sensitive, like the people that are that really get affected by by uh, baking soda. Okay. In you what know, way? <laughs> like you can taste it more than anything else like oh, if, if if i yeah, i'm yeah. really sensitive to baking soda so right. if i have something that has even just a little bit too much baking soda in it in I, your banana cake or whatever i fucking hate it I, the whole dish tastes like baking soda and i'm done i'm done with it uh, is it where, kind of like that reaction where you put baking powder baking soda with vinegar and and it makes a volcano that's what's happening in your kind of not in really. your sugar. Anyway, no it is no it is it's yeah. a very it's a very similar <laughs> chemical reaction yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yes. you're basically doing the same thing with sugar and water instead. So the sugar, um, yeah, the sugar slows down the process, I guess, and makes it crystallize. And that's how you get hokey pokey. We used okay. to make, we used to make it, um, at one of the restaurants I worked at as a fine dining. Oh, really? Fine. You made your own hokey pokey. Yeah. It's not like a, yeah. um, you've got a thing on that. Uh, no, no, it was, it was a fine dining. What's Ameri- the word I'm searching for there? I don't know. I'm sure you'll come to it if if it matters, it'll come to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it, it matters, you know, the copyright, the you know the. I don't know intellectual property. Anyway, uh, yeah. Anybody well, can make anyone can make hokey is What you're saying, anyone can make it. No one's got the rights to that. No, 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 no. It is it is a New Zealand thing. It is no mm-hmm. not not um, exclusive to one. And what did you ever think that maybe hokey pokey, maybe the hokey pokey is what it's all about. You do the hokey pokey oh and you turn around. You've blown my mind. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. So they named. Sorry for the clapping. So what? So Rudy Rudy Tootie Fresh is named after a song. Rudy Tootie, Fresh and Fruity. Yeah. Rudy and, Tootie. And then Hokey Pokey is also named after a song. You do the hokey pokey and you turn around. So. Oh yeah, they're both song-based foods. I think I think the song Rudy Tootie on Judy. I think that's the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> 
Who's Judy? What if that doesn't make sense though? Rudy Judy. On Judy. Rudy Judy. Like on like your own duty? Like on Oh, on duty, possibly. I actually don't know. That's one of those 90, 90s kids moments where I can find out the answer to this question, but I'm going to choose not to. <laughs> uh, I've got a, since you're from the States and I'm a fan of the Grateful Dead, I would love to know your opinion on Jerry Garcia. The ice cream. Yeah, you know, Jerry Garcia. Like, yeah. He endorsed yeah, yeah. that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He obviously yeah. liked it. Um, I'm pretty neutral. I'm like I'm not I'm not a big artificial cherry fan. Do you know how Ben and Jerry's got started? Um I think I do, but I would like to be re reminded. Well, um what I heard is that they saw in like a, a newspaper or a magazine it was like, make your own ice cream, send away to this um Yeah. You know, uh send us five bucks and we'll send you the ingredients yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the instructions. And then they did it and then they just Increase the scale and keep going, and and you know now they're freaking another multi billionaires. Uh, yeah, they probably did now. I don't know. Yeah, they are, but their their family are multi millionaires. Yeah, if not billionaires, Ben and Jerry's is one of one of if not the largest mm. ice cream company in the world, next to Bluebell. But Bluebell owns never heard of them. I think I think Blue Bluebell is one of those companies now, like um, um, I can't think of another one, but like one of those parent companies. That is so powerful that you don't even know their name. Oh, right. They own like five other ones that yeah. you actually know. Yeah. I've seen that graph. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the company that owns Pepsi also owns Firestone or like, you know, like yeah, they own tires and keep acquiring news. Yeah. yeah. And then that's capitalism for you. Okay. Don't you love capitalism? How do you feel about capitalism? Well, we got, um, goody goody gum drops ice cream out of it I uh, yeah i mean uh, there's some it. some positives to capitalism yeah, yeah and those are ice two. cream yeah ice cream ice cream yeah internationally known ice cream hmm. okay can we take a second here let's take a second and now a word from our sponsor have you ever tried dihydrogen monoxide plants love it people need it we're actually made out of it a lot of it dihydrogen monoxide if your plants are looking sad and they need a little bit of um, zhuzh to them, try our new dihydrogen monoxide. We're selling it out in bottles uh, and cans are soon to follow. People all over the world are begging for this product. Give you, me dihydrogen monoxide! And you can only I get it you. here. Thank I'm you. Dying. Name is Giovanni Giorgio, <laughs> but everybody calls me Giorgio. Do, 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 do. No, here we are back. Resetters. Yeah. I'm going to try not to breathe. So, uh, Dan, you should keep breathing. Oh my God. You should definitely keep breathing. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. <clears throat> Look, I just breathe. 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 Right there. You breathe. Is that a breathed word? Breathe. I breathe. I think actually those some regular verbs that um, have a past tense version with ED should be changed to irregular. So instead of saying, I breathed, we should say, I breathe. I, like I, instead I, of I farted, you'd be like, I furt. I furt. <laughs> I furted. I furted. Yeah. No, I do not know enough about my own native tongue to debate or agree with that. Mm. Well, what would you rather use? Breathed or <clears throat> broth? I don't know. Like, naturally, what, what do you think? Broth. Um, broth. Broth, right? Broth. Yeah. Come on. So let's get a um, change.org petition going. Segway. <laughs> Musicians are such cheaters. Musicians are cheaters. They use audio gate, and we're not yeah. doing that. Yeah, and sometimes it's not cheating, but it's just like skullduggery. You know, it's like kind of a cool, like accepted form of cheating. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know. Oh um, man, yeah, but we've got we've yep. got some. Uh, we we may hear some slight very slight noise in the background for this one and that is because we we me and dan <clears throat> happen to live in what's called a commune yeah yeah in this one house there's currently nine of us yeah one more into consideration uh mm -hmm. um, and we're in lockdown right now and actually today is the 69th day of nice. lockdown nice 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 Act not nice actually no no it's actually <laughs> quite terrible um but yeah. we're making the most of it. 
tomorrow's day. It's actually, you know what? It's actually good to be in a commune for me during yeah. a lockdown because yeah. I've got all these different people that I can interact with instead of myself. Yeah. I, I hate myself. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're that great, but. Yeah. Whoa. Ouch. <laughs> I, meant, I meant for you. I hate's a strong word. Do you? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, that do guy's you? an asshole. Yeah. He's always interrupting people. He's always interrupting people. But well, we should be called the interrupters. Mm. <laughs> We'd never get started, though. Yeah, we'd always yeah, just we'd be interrupting just people. people. Yeah. No, we got to reset. We got to we set the shit up, and then we re it. Yeah. No. So um. Yeah. Today we were going to talk about well, tonight. Oh, we were going to talk about um communes. Drinking a beer. Yeah. yeah. I just think uh, I think we have a lot of information a lot of forehand knowledge on the or front hand knowledge on the uh, subject matter so you much more than me well how I, long have you been i haven't been here that long i've only been here for like a year but you've been in other communes too nope really yeah so interesting enough i grew up with just me and my mother for most of my life then for another portion of my life i moved in with my father and his wife but I you have normally lived either alone or with one other person my entire life. Uh, I thought you were at the the other commune, candle lit before yeah. you came here. Yeah, so I've been living in a combination of candle lit and... Um, what are we called here? What is this commune called? I don't know, man. We call ourselves... The candles. The candles. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's also Candlewood, which is like where a, you're moving to. Sounds like an 80s. Another commune. Sounds like an 80s um, synthwave pop band. Yeah, uh, Motown band. The Candles. The Candles. I don't know, because Candles usually do white. I, and I think of a Motown as like a black group. I, yeah. Maybe yeah, the Black uh, Candles. The Black Candles. Is that racist? Well, that sounds kind of cool. Can, I mean, the Black Keys. It's, I mean, it's yeah. just, we're talking about inanimate objects, man. Black Candles emit the least light. So, you know. Do they? It's kind of metaphorical. Fact? Can somebody fact check them on that? Yeah. Think about it. A, a, a light candle lets more light pass through it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I heard. The candles have been a... Sorry, I'm drinking a beer, so you may commonly hear me go... We had a little bit of a technical difficulty. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're talking about communes. Yeah, communes. Well, I mean, we, we, just, we just sat down not long ago, and we had a communal dinner. Mm. Yeah. Which is a very, very new thing for me. We have this large dinner where we all sit around and we eat food together. It's I lovely. would say that is probably the best thing about living in the commune or in a commune is the food you get. Everyone takes it and you don't have to cook. You only like cook once a week. And then when you cook on that one night a week, you cook really good. And everybody does the same thing. So every night we're getting these amazing vegan meals. Yeah. And I'm eating All better vegan. than I ever had in my whole life. Mainly, that was the biggest food. surprise. To yeah, me. yeah. Especially during lockdown, where you're just eating really well. Everyone loves cooking. Yeah, and everyone's got the time to yeah make a good meal. Well, no, what's great is when we're out of lockdown, we're still very much doing communal dinners, and it's, mm. it's and great. our cooking skills have improved now. Yeah, we're all becoming better cooks for it. I made my first dal today. I roasted my first beetroot. I oh. uh, also. Made a salad, which is kind of a new thing for me. That doll was pretty, pretty good. And I made smashed kumar. Yeah. I actually didn't have any of the smashed kumar. How did it come out? Loved it. Yeah? It's great. Damn. Beautiful. Damn. I'm mad. There's still I, some in the fridge. I made a heap, so then yeah. there's breakfast tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so that's I'm the gonna... best thing about being in a... Besides the orgies, obviously, that we have every we don't, Wednesday. We don't have that food orgies. Is... <laughs> there aren't... There are no orgies, to my knowledge, happening. <coughs> I mean, that's not, uh, <laughs> that doesn't say that there aren't orgies that are. That's are right. Happening, but. You know, there's, for all you know, there's orgies going on all around you. You just got invited to them. We mainly got a big family vibe, I think, I think is a good way to mm. say it. Like we all got cousins vibe. Like we're all cousins that live together now. That was my kind of first thought or everyone's kind of first thought. thought when you say you're, you're moving to a commune, it's like, Okay. That or commune just, or a cult because when you talk about a cult then you're talking about like crazy sex parties and, <coughs> and like, possibly i mean like right? yeah yeah i mean the media hypes it up for that. yeah oh for sure i mean the the amount of the amount of content that's put on the media 
um, about about these things because they do it. They, you know, I mean, because there's there's the classic examples. You know, you got like you got your Jonestowns, you got your mm. all that stuff, and the, those were cults that were set up in communes. Yeah, they started out as communes, and then there's a big, like a religious factor gets added. Yeah, I think I think the people that live in communes try to move away from the word commune and yeah. call it a, a intentional community. Yeah, that's really interesting calling it a, an intentional community because I first time I heard it I was like, what do you mean every community is intentional? Oh, 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 oh. But <laughs> no, it's like I don't I don't know any of my neighbors, you know. Mm. Not really. Yeah. Just awkwardly say hi, you know. Here we know every single person. Well, I know every single person of all the houses personally, you know, um yeah. In one way or Spend the other. time together. Uh, there's been a few that are uh, quite in, uh, in introverted, so it's been a little hard to... I'd say gardening's them. been the biggest bonder here. Got, yeah. Between the houses, like during lockdown at least. Everyone's in the food court helping yeah. to produce yeah. food and grow. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to be out there. Yeah. I threw some sunflower seeds on top of the, the soil hill. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've taken root. We have a massive... So it's a... It, yeah, we we are what I would call an intentional community. Mm, that's it's, what the community community does call itself, from what I've heard. Yeah, well, and the reason when I got is, the um, the listing on um, the ad, it's yeah. it said something like, "Have you ever lived in an intentional community?" <laughs> yeah, well, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know." I think I think it's a very heavy thing to say because it comes with an intent, and mm. I I think the intent is pretty pretty heavily folded on itself so it's many layered but like it's things like uh um justice for the environment eco justice um yeah. if for uh humanitarian stuff for you know and so on and so forth like so if it, there was a religion here it would be mother nature or something like that no is that no no if there was a religion here it would be whatever the individual wanted their religion to be Right. And that's the difference between a commune and a cult. We don't follow one messiah. We did, but we, we the messiah moved out. So, Really? There yeah. was a messiah here? Yeah, it was a small cat. Its name uh, was Temok. No, it, Zeus is here. Zeus is a god. No, no, not the same. Okay. Temok would kick Zeus's ass any day. I never knew about Zeus's existence. Mm, but with, when you're talking when about the, the intent here, and you're saying like the intent is... um. You know, what did you say? To make the world a better place, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And and to, to build a community where people can grow from each other and not just exist with each other. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful plan. Yeah. And you've been, yeah, one year you've been doing it. Yeah, and I feel... You know, I've been doing it 60, no, no, no. 69. I moved in like three days before lockdown, so I've been doing it 70... Something days. But this is the 69th day, day of lockdown. Oh, yeah, so 73 days or something like that. 73 days. I'm in. We'll, in we'll, cel- we'll celebrate your 100th day. True. Keep track of that shit. We'll celebrate yeah. your 100th day. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I love it. It really helped me out um, at my time in my life where I was going through a big change and um, mm. I've moved and, and it's like, well, how do you, you know, start again, you know? Yeah. When you're trying to. And then a good way to start again is just move to a commune. You'll instantly meet like 40 people <laughs> yeah. and over time you'll get to know them and uh in my experience they've been very cool and yeah made good friendships yeah there's and a lot of really the orgies interesting have been so amazing there's no the orgies that we don't invite Devin to yeah okay yeah, yeah. that's fine we know I, you wouldn't come so we just don't invite you you have no idea how much wednesday nights come. 9 p.m on the roof i would come so much <laughs> you have no idea i'd come every time yeah um yeah well sometimes we have big bowls oh my god no segway <laughs> cows are cute if someone had to ask me if i was pro or anti-cow i would definitely answer pro cow but they would probably immediately think that you're talking about the dairy industry Oh, dude, why'd you have to bring up the dairy industry? (laughs) We're a vegan household. I want to just say, for anyone who's listening, so crazy. anyone out there who 
would like to make their own milk that's really easy and it's not dairy <laughs> is try oat milk. Oat milk oat milk is so easy it's to make. It's so easy to make. It's like one part of oat. oats to four, four parts, parts of water. Water. And, and you then blend it and then you drain it. If you want to put it in the fridge and you've got milk. If you want it it's sweet, delicious. add some sugar or honey. Um and there you go. You stop paying I don't Stop. know what it is. It's probably like six dollars. Six dollars or something for, for a liter two liters, two liters. of of milk in a container that is so bad for the environment. A tetra pack. You don't want those. How those bad are... are oats though? <clears throat> Not, Not that bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Do you know that goat milk is the greatest of all time? Oh my god. <laughs> goat milk is the best non non dairy milk. What? Yeah. Non non dairy. Because like for the, for the environment. For the environment. Cow, but it's yeah. milk. That it produces less methane. They don't have to constantly reproduce to. Do they um, have machines that they milk the goats to? Is it is that like a, a thing you do by hand? You know? uh, I'm sure they do. Like, I, I, I can't see why not. Goat cheese is popular enough. No, I mean, are there machines milking these goats too? Oh, totally. Oh, really? Yeah. Big, <laughs> Because it's really weird. You know, like I've yeah. been, I used to make money on the side as a teenager by getting up at four in the morning and going milk, you know, going to a milking shed and bringing up or getting the motorbike, bringing up like yeah. hundred cows and then putting oh like hundred, no, 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 twenty cups in this like herringbone milking shed. <laughs> it's the worst job ever. You're just staring at cow, cows' asses, putting milk cups on them, and the machines are like. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> But then they would like give me fifty bucks. Like that's how I went to see corn. <clears throat> like, Mom and Dad, I really gotta see corn. Corn's like the best band. Corn? Like K O R N? With the R backwards? Yeah, with the R you backwards. You know it, right? Yeah, I know them. Yeah, and then they were like, Well, you, we're not gonna bring you eighty dollars plus. So that um I think my mum might have been milking at the time, so she was like, You can go do a milking at that place. Oh yeah. And get fifty bucks. So, so I did it twice and that was hundred bucks that was enough to go see corn and it was so amazing. It blew my What's your favorite seventeen year old may uh, mind. Mm, my favorite corn song. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can identify with this group because they yeah. suck. <laughs> yeah, what were we listening to today is like um the gorillas, but each instrument is five. Oh, God. Um Beats behind yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was torture. It was torture. It was so bad. It was a very intense, uh, very intense experience. I can't recommend it. There's it there's a, like um, who's Frank Zappa's friend? I don't know. Yeah, we don't have the same knowledge set, Dan. I don't know all of your references. Shit, I know just like too much shit about um, random facts about music and rock and roll and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Trout Mask Replica. That's the album I was thinking of. See? Okay, right. see? Yeah, I have I no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was I just a, a good... jumble of words to me. I, yeah, that's what it's... Uh, you got it. it that's what Trout <laughs> Mask Replica is. First try. <laughs> First try. If you can't yeah. if you can't tell, I'm throwing my hands up in the air. I saw the, like, the, the top YouTube comment was like, if you meet a girl one day and you really like her and you think you might have a future together and things are looking good you know if you bring her home and you put on some music do not put on this record <laughs> <laughs> trout mass replica no. just the name trout mass yeah. replica is, is is such a ridiculous ridiculous yeah. name and what he did right was he he made the band stay in this house like a kind of mini commune almost like they couldn't leave they just yeah. had food quite cheaply and they played every day. Yeah, I know the story. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. yeah. I've repeating, repeating, repeating. This. And then he took them to the studio and he just made them do it in one take. Yeah. The shit they've been, you know, working so hard over, like slaves. And um, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the kind of what he wanted. Yeah, the concept, I guess. It's so bad. All right. Yeah. I think this is a good time to take a break and listen to some Trout, Mag Trout Mass Rescue. I can't even say it. Yeah, Captain Beefheart. We're listening to it right now. This is one of the worst things I've ever heard. Right? If not the worst thing I've ever heard. 
Trout Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart. And see, the album cover, you'd think he's holding a trout in front of his face, right? But it's not. It's a Trout Mask Replica. So it's actually like a catfish or something. That's the joke. Oh, that's the point. It's a replica. Like, it's just him replicating what he Why did they write this? Music. Why, why would they... This is the, he forced them like to do it day and day after over and over. His voice is pretty cool though. Yeah, and the guitarists are actually like pretty good, but what they're putting together right now is just nonsense. It actually sounds like what we heard, kind of the five um yeah, beats yeah, behind yeah. each instrument. Very similar. Very yeah. similar. But that's what's so incredible about it, because it's actually that hard to play exactly five beats behind each other. Maybe that's the genius of it, that they're making it, you know. They're making it sound terrible they by play doing it like this, this thing. every time. Like, it sounds like they're only playing it like this right now, right? But to do this exactly the same every time would be very difficult. Actually, yeah, that, that does sound quite impressive. It doesn't make it any better, but it... <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough. Like, if it was good... Finish your apple, son. I said let Take me finish time. the apple. Yeah, yeah. I That's said right. finish the apple. I'm sure... It doesn't sound that disgusting, does it? Was it... Ac- oh, no, I'm taking my headphones off. That's disgusting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good apple. Okay. Apples and peanut butter. If, you, if you've never tried it. <laughs> That'd be a good soundbite for like a dog eating <laughs> apples in you know, his meal. I'm good at being gross. <laughs> um, Famous last words. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> the downfall of every human being. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. What, what was it? What was it you wanted to talk? You wanted to talk yeah, about we something. Were talking about communes and, and cults. And I was thinking, well, just hypothetically, you know. What would be your ideal cult? Mm. What would it be? You can have let's set, set, set some parameters. So you are the leader of the cult, and you get to say, you know, more or less what you know these cultists do. Cultists. Cultists, yeah. Like, let's say you've got a hundred. Yeah. Okay. What do you what do you do? So it would be some if we had to follow some sort of religion based on like the definition of a cult. You you would be the religious Yeah, I would God. be the religious figurehead, but it would still be like some religious thing like but anyway, anyway. Up to you. It's your yeah, dream like, cult. Like multiple cults have been claimed to be a son of God or like You going for that? No, no. But I'm saying under those parameters. You get to, yeah, what is, you know, what do you really want? I would want everyone to, one, practice bonsai. Right. Everyone would have their own little collection so I could see more cool little trees. I like it. Um, I would like to see a community where people are comfortable um, coming to one another for anything that they need. Accepting rejection when it's needed. I would like to see a community, a cult. A cult. It would be like a super nice so cult. So it's kind of like you're saying it like be super everybody's nice. got the confidence to ask for something, but they've also got the humility <clears throat> to accept to it. accept with and that, not being And that sums that. up the entirety of what cult I would want. I want like a wholesome nice cult like a cult where people are are, are friends and they know each other and they 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 spend time to learn more about one another and help one another if they're so you would struggling call it the friend cult the friend cult <laughs> <laughs> i would call it liquid sunshine <laughs> the golden sunshine that's what i would call no, that's what you would call the drugs that you would take because yeah. you just gotta be like lots of drugs you know what you'd be do you have any drugs because you're not afraid to ask for anything right yeah is that the point no, I mean, if you got drugs, share them. But I mean, other than that, no. no. <laughs> yeah, but you have to ask. Oh, no, it's just like everyone's just, yeah, it's all friends, good friends, family. Mm. So your kind of idea of cult is actually the commune. Mm-mm. Where's the illegal shit? Where's the, the only thing you're doing is like forcing no. them to, to do bonsai. Like, 
<laughs> you know, your fantasy is not that extreme. Like, yeah, well, I want people to be peaceful. I think okay, bonsai that's a beautiful thing. Is, a, is a peaceful That makes peaceful me life. feel bad for not wanting the same thing as you. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, practice meditation, practice mm. um, uh, yeah. daily rituals, stick to a strict schedule. Everything you do is focused. You want a, you want a personal trainer as your cult. Like a life trainer, kind of. Yeah. yeah. You're the one who has to spay here. So. <laughs> I, can't, I can't let down my hundred people. Yeah. I gotta wake them up at five thirty to do meditation. To, to, to do meditation, and then, and then have our morning so tea what, ceremony. What if I'm in your cult, and then I don't want to wake up and do the five thirty ceremony. We fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's the benefits then of this thing? Um. You'll just be really happy, liquid yeah, sunshine. Yeah, you'll you'll have a gr- you'll reach enlightenment, All right. and you'll be a better person in society and for your friends. And- we live right next door to a meditation place. They do meditation every Tuesday, every Tuesday, seven p.m. I want to go to it. We're in lockdown now, day sixty-nine. Nice, but um, I think I want we know. Let's go. Yeah, totally. I think a few people in the in the commune have expressed interest in going to that. So, mm. high time. It'd be nice. What about <laughs> you? Okay, what what is what is your ideal cult? Cult. Maybe one of those old timey. Have you been to those? The, what do they call them when mm-hmm. they have the old fairs? Renaissance fair. We had one in the states that was, um, like every Sunday in texas yeah. it was every sunday uh, yeah well I, I think i only went to it twice but they were they were great cool what did you tell us more about this experience oh my god no because i'm going to tell you about a different experience there's actually i don't know if it's still around if there's anybody from texas listening from the dallas area please let me know if i don't remember what it's called but it's called like the knight's table or something like that and it's a giant building and right on the edge of the business district of dallas texas so like the center city like right on the edge of it there's this Uh giant fucking castle like it it's it's obviously fake stone built to the top and it's got like four pillars like guard towers mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a place that you go to it's a giant stadium that you go to and you pay to eat like a turkey leg some mashed potatoes and a beer if you're an adult or like a crazy cocktail if you're a, if you're a kid and you watch mm. people fucking joust you just oh, you cool. you cool. watch people on horses Damn. riding at each other at full speed right. jousting and then proceeding to play out some like sort exactly of dialogue. Like exactly like they used to, kind of. Exactly. And then they play out some sort of dialogue that like mm. makes it seem like there's some sort of story. Ladies and gentlemen. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> so I, I have actually been to this on multiple occasions because why the fuck not? And I am a nerd. So I like yeah, this old it. history shit. Um it's not it's not very accurate at all but it's fun it's a fun fun way to explore medieval yeah western that's um, cool everybody's uh, got you know history stuff that thing like what would have i been 300 years ago you yeah know, i think yeah, like yeah. even the school system didn't exist as it dead. does today if you're over the age of 45 dead true yeah just remember that so you'd have to live your life so differently because you'd be 20 and you'd be like fuck i'll be dead in 20 years yep yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd, maybe people were way more living in the moment back then because it was like you didn't have I've had twenty moments. children and fifteen of them would die <laughs> yeah. to war, disease, yeah. or I'm dying. Famine. I'm just like just living in the moment because the moment's only four years. So, so but anyway, um, I've been to this this knight's table or whatever it's called, knights of the round table, knights of the round table, or whatever the fuck this thing is called, uh, multiple times. And I thought going on the second or third time that the story was going to be similar. Even on the second time after the story, the storyline that was playing out was yeah. different. I was okay. like, oh, okay, maybe they have a few rotating things. So I looked into this 
after the third time, when it was a completely different story, one that wasn't the first story or the second story, they rewrite the story in a series of like 15 stories and they replay them out over and over again. Okay, cool. So there's all these narratives, but is it set in a day? So one day narrative and then the next day is the next chapter or is it no. like a TV saga where things just kind of like go on? No, they were completely different stories. With so similar... kind of like wrestling. Uh, yeah, in a lot of ways, but I don't think they were as consistent. But the jousting was the, real. They had different names. Um, jousting's real, right? Or do they say behind? Do they say beforehand like you you're gonna hit me and I'm gonna be like this? Don't put it in my face. Oh, it's 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 definitely staged. Oh, okay, it's cool. definitely staged. Yeah, it's not that's, real. That's real crazy. jousting. Yeah, real uh, jousting. Yeah. I was, was thinking it was real when you first said that. Yeah. My lord, no, real jousting is something something that I don't think is legal <laughs> anymore. Right. Um, Even though doing it, just practicing it, is quite dangerous. Then, yeah. What if oh, the yeah. horse? You know, I mean, the number one most dangerous sport in the world is equestrian. Like, no way. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the number one cause of dying in jousting is getting a big fucking stick in your face? <laughs> <laughs> I actually would argue that that's probably not true. Oh, really? Yeah, like the weird <laughs> shit that I want to see the statistics on that. Be like a fucking uh, splinter from it going into your eyeball and through. No, your you gotta skull. wear the, the. Yeah, but like underneath the shield or something. Shield, oh, yeah, I guess it's a big stick going in your face. So yeah, you know, it's gonna just. It's, it's gonna explode. It's not gonna break. It's gonna explode. Uh, they they build them to explode. Oh yeah, but but anyway, you, I heard you, you earlier. You mentioned wrestling. Do you, do you have do you, do you have any history on wrestling? Yes, I do. I was the biggest fan of wrestling in the in the golden age of wrestling, which was Hulk Hogan, you know, the Ultimate Warrior. I guess that was the inception of like TV wrestling as we know it. Mm-hmm. And I was fucking hooked, man. I couldn't believe it the day they told me that it was staged and that it was fake. And I was like, "What? I couldn't believe it." I was like, "No way!" And then when I watched it after they said that, I could see it. Yeah. Of course it stayed. It just ruined it for me yeah, after that. Yeah. I knew it was Until staged. Until I went to see a live wrestling show here in Auckland. My friend took me because her friend's partner is um the in, I mean, he's not the invisible guy. He's um he wears like a suit so he can't you can't see his face. He's called like faceless mm. or something mm. like that. And it was fucking awesome, man. It was like they all had these different characters coming out and and you look at the other like, you know, the nine or ten year old boys in the audience and they're just like oh my god it's so real they're fucking scared this guy's coming out well and that's the yeah. thing it's it's all about the it's all about the characters and the the stories yeah, that yeah. they tell with the characters yeah 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 i do remember every time i watched the first thing i just wished that it was going to be hulk hogan versus the ultimate warrior because i was like that is the ultimate fight of all time because they're the two greatest <laughs> and every time we watched we were waiting and the next fight is the challenger. And it was never, I never saw it. I got to like search YouTube and watch that. Because who's better, Hulk Hogan or Ultimate Warrior? Go. Hulk Hogan. Right. He's maintained this yeah. image yeah. until now. He's still the fucking Hulk. Yeah. Who is the Ultimate Warrior? Oh, yeah. Yeah, who the fuck is so Hulk, Hulk won, right? you, do you know who? Do you know who my favorite wrestler was? Mickey Rock. I do quite like Mickey Rourke, actually. No, he made the movie The Wrestler. Did he really? Yeah, about oh. being a fucking wrestler. Oh, yeah, so I still haven't seen I've that. watched it in this house on the I DVDs have, here. I haven't seen that. Lucky we're recording this. You can listen back to it and go see The Wrestler. Oh, my Lord, yeah. Because he was a, um, a fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He stopped being an actor and he went and got all fucked up fighting professionally. He, he yeah. You fought professionally, right? What do you mean? You know, um, doing martial arts. Don't, you money. never went in a competition? Oh, yeah, yeah, for competitions. But I wasn't making money off of Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Wow. What's that's, the word for that then? That's the definition of professionally. A championship. Like, have you been, have you been in those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure what else you're asking for. Yeah, I've been, I've I just been in wanna, championships. What, I, what I'm getting at is I want to hear about, like, a, a good fight you had that was, like, controlled. You know, it was, like, under, not a street fight, not a, you know, stuff, but, like, a, you know. Come on. Oh yeah. Um to um Toho Toho Murata, I think was his name. He he came for a cuff 
cuff grabbing, yep. shoulder grabbing, uh, leg going to throw you over leg based overthrow the kick throw. Uh, and I I separated my leg from his leg, stomped down and rolled. Whoa! Um, for a classic ogoshi like that's legal move stomping a guy's face and rolling. I didn't stomp. I like stomped on the ground like oh, held, held oh my place. shit. Okay, that that yeah. I was gonna say <clears throat> you're you're I think you're really brutal right and, now. And I went for an ogoshi by like sweeping his leg and pulling yeah. him down to the ground, uh, hitting him for a uh, a point. You know, um, okay. so that was that was good. That and, felt pretty good. Yeah, and point points win. Sweeping a point, him. A point is of. a win. So that got me that got me silver, so which was pretty cool. Did you see the, ever see the Karate Kid like the original when he's like, he's yeah, saying, well, he's why saying do you think I do bonsai? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I have, like, the end of that film when he he goes to the cliff and he takes the sensei's famous favorite bonsai and puts it in a pot and he's like, what have you done? Mm. It was growing perfectly in nature. You fucking idiot. Yeah. And he's like, I just tried to make you happy. Yeah. And then he's like, teach me to sweep. Because it's, like, it's all about like this competitive karate or whatever. Rubber. And like you got to like, trip leg. people up. Yeah, and he's like, he just gives him a broom. And he's like, well, he picks up a broom and he just like moves it back and forth. And he's like, here you go. That's how you sweep. <laughs> I'm teaching you that shit. <laughs> I never, I didn't get it. I was like, is that not part of karate? Is sweeping? Like, isn't that a big it part is, of it? It is. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, maybe it's like, you're just going to trip people up. I know it. You're yeah. not ready for sweeping. They're gonna, you're gonna you gotta know start the with the broom. That that was his thing though. It's like Taoism. You gotta you gotta start with the broom. Just to show me your like awesome sweeping ability. That didn't make any sense, does it? No, not really. Yeah. Is this right. Karate Kid um, part fuck, two? I don't know. I think there's three of them. Uh, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, and then the the new one, which is actually Jackie, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Kid. Yeah, yeah. No, they call it Karate Kid, but he's learning it's Kung, Kung Fu. It's Kung Fu like, Kid. Yeah, it's yeah. too confusing. I was like, People are not going to get that. No, if we yeah. call it Kung Fu Kid, and no. he's doing Kung Fu, they're like, no, just call it Karate Kid, and no. he's doing Kung Fu. Do you know what? Do you know what makes me really sad? I think people won't get that, and that's the issue. They won't get the difference of. Okay, I'm going to make a movie called Kung Fu Kid because I think that sounds fucking cool. Even better than Karate Kid. Kung Fu Kid. Oh, we got Kung Fu Panda, you know? Mm. But karate, there is something cool about that word. Karate, you always hear that as a kid. You're like, yeah, fucking ninjas and samurai do karate. Nope, neither one of those do karate. Yeah, but I mean, as a kid, you're like... Do you want to know the history of karate? Sure. The history of karate is it was formed by the peasants of Okinawa uh-huh. which is an island in the South China Sea uh, now technically in Kill Bill part 2 now technically um, what sorry part of um, Japan uh, they w- designed this fighting style using mainly farming tools and bare hands to fight against like these. hands that are made from beers yeah <laughs> yeah they have got an okinawan bear no Damn. no no like just using their bare hands and bare like um karate re- literally translates to uh open hand open hand so like the whole idea was fighting these people that were samurai fully armed by using techniques that could Go against that and using weapons that were previously just thought of as farming tools like the sai and the kama and I didn't so so I don't see any connection with the farming tools and karate. Uh, because you've never done karate. But you don't use farming tools, right? You just you use do. your body. No, you do. Oh you do. You yeah, use yeah, yeah. what kind there's, of weapons? I don't know. I thought it was just like your hands. You no, know? when you get when Open you get hand. higher higher up in the, the ranks you can you can start practicing Ranchucks? nunchucks are, are one thing that you can practice I think I saw like a Mythbusters in some thing or schools? something where they're like nunchucks are actually not that effective they're not it's, a, it's a, like a stick on a chain yeah and then another stick like oh how much resistance you're really gonna get <laughs> you can get some smacking power if you combine it like most of the spanking si- but anyway I'm not gonna sit here and defend nunchucks but yeah <laughs> y- you, you come you on 
They're good if you combine the them with other checks. things. Um, the invaders who invented them. No, they just look cool. No, they they they're effective. Yeah. Uh, against... It's like, look, I can do this. So imagine what I can do with my hands made from bears. <laughs> yeah. Like each hand is like the head of a bear on it. They don't have to be the hands of the bear. What I'm saying is like, got like, <laughs> you know, kind of Voltron. Yeah. And the teeth of that bear are just like diamonds. Like you sharpen a diamond to a thin blade. Like how much how much pressure can a diamond take when it's like really thin and long? Like if you've got a meter, let's say you've got a meter long Ooh. strip of diamond and that strip is like five mil thin. <clears throat> can you just kick that in half? I wonder if you get... Uh a sword made of diamonds oh my god like made not not diamond encrusted but made of diamonds yes oh my god that would cut anything literally that would cut literally anything literally literally what about if it hit another diamond sword one diamond is it like when a movable object hits an unstoppable force there's like a sonic boom I think they would just these two diamond really hard, swords. Yeah. Ding! Yeah, they would just vibrate really, really hard. It'd like pop your eardrums. I want to see Mythbusters on that. What happens when two diamond swords hit Collide. each other yeah. at the same velocity, oh my God. same angle? That'll be the end of the world. Yep. Oh my God! Two diamond swords. Boom. That's zero. That's dividing by zero. Yeah. Uh, can we can we cut it? Okay, I'll teach you how to cut. Just push the space bar there. Oh, teach me how to cutty. Teach me, teach me how to cutty. Ooh, cut that space. Sounds. That we should let God take control of this podcast. What? And the way I think we can do it is see if you agree with me. Like the universe rather than God, perhaps. So you write down three letters three random letters and i'll write down three random letters and if by some miracle they come together and it says like the word like tractors will be like yeah. god wants us to talk about tractors we'll just put we'll put the letters in a cup and we'll pull them out one by one and we'll see what six letters we have do you agree to the terms of this agreement sure all right we'll be back i want you to pick these letters up and uh in a random order and put them down. Q. Should be a U next. No, it's O. Okay. Core. X. Cox. <laughs> Wait, but X can be a Z sound. Cox. A. Cox. Cox. C. What letter is that? Is it a Z or an A? Coxes. Ah. It says Coxes. Q O X A C Z. I want you to look up Coxes. what. Look, that's just what it sounds like. It's not. It's not how it's spelled. So we're supposed to talk about Cox. No, Coxes. Coxes. Like Do you the know guys Coxes in the is? rowing boat? The Cox in the rowing boat. Okay. No. Um, no. Z Z. Look, Co Coxes. Coxes. Coxes is a bacterium or archaeon that has a spherical ovoid or generally round shape. What? What? What does that mean? That's what we're going to talk about. Microbiology. Can you repeat that? What is a coxin? A coccus. How do you spell this, though? C-O-C-C-U-S. Coccus. This is going to be this is going to be difficult to masturbate to. <laughs> is it the plan? <laughs> do you want to be able to masturbate to a podcast? Talking about coccus, I mean. Well, it's not. No, no, let's talk about coxes. What do you I want to talk coxes? about? Cox? Like cox. How many cocks have you seen in your life, Dan? <laughs> Too many. Every time I see one, I'm like, doesn't look good. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, I mean, they've got their own beauty, but uh, like, yeah. especially a flaccid one, you're like, it looks like an old man sleeping. Yeah. Like a bald, naked man I sleeping or something. Penises are only really pretty when they're fully erect. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's yeah. their beauty. That's it's like beauty. a yeah weird flower thing or something you know that it's a weird inflates itself and you know imagine if any other part of your body did that like 
your arm just went straight up like you're a Nazi or something. Yeah. You're like, oh, sorry. It's a... I'm a horny for Hitler. Oh, God. What? <laughs> oh, Dan, I don't want our podcast to be remembered for the phrase horny for Hitler. <laughs> sorry. You know what I mean, though? Like, when you get an erection, that part of your body, like, gets bigger and stands up. Yeah. So what if, Stands like, it attention. happened to, like, your leg or your toe? You're like, oh, my God, look at my toe. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> Thought of my toes. My it's toes are itchy. My toes are itchy in there. I got to fit my point. shoes on because my toes are right. My toes are right. Uh, can, honey, can you just calm down for a minute? Can you just step oh, over there for a minute? I'm Tarantino gonna, would love that. Was like all down. your toes are little oh. dicks. <laughs> he <laughs> was so into feet. He's so into feet. Is that the fetish though? That each toe is supposed to be like a little cock, like coxes. I don't know. I don't know what Ooh. people <laughs> like coxes. Oh, full I said circle. it. <laughs> yeah. He said the word. Yeah. No, that's not what coxus is. Um, <laughs> no, it's like that we we're talking about irregular forms of verbs. This is an irregular form of a noun. Cock. No, coxus is instead of cox, I want it to be is coxes. a bacterium or archaeon that has spherical ovoid or generally round shape. Okay. So it's a, a round bacteria. Yeah. So it's coronavirus. Yeah. Really? Coronavirus, coronavirus is, is a cock. I agree. A and this is day sixty nine. Day sixty nine. So this is the day that coronavirus sucks us too. Of this fucking lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. This is the sixty nine nice. podcast. It's not the sixty ninth podcast. It is. It's only the second one we've <clears> recorded though. But it's the sixty nine podcast. David and I, the resitters, because we stay up late in this house in the commune, and it gets late. We watch films, hang out, chat, and then before we go to sleep, we have to reset everything. Reset, gotta, reset, reset, reset. We gotta, reset, you know, clean up any reset, plates or food, move the reset, reset, stuff back, reset. turn the lights off, reset it for the next people to come in in a few hours when they wake up. And they, the people working here, this is actually the office, or the house during the week. Yep. Yeah. This is the, the the hub. Tonight we've got. The lucky luck of having it as uh, the weekend setup. The we weekend. A, I wish the weekend was here. We're so bougie we'll that we have cry a, from another day. We have we have a weekend set up and a weekday set up. Yeah, that's how bougie this house is. Because it looks fucking awesome yeah. in the weekend set up, like we do now with all the couches here. Yeah, I think if you really want to look bougie. Which is this thing we've got going on here? Is you, all you need is lots of lamps, lamps and plants. I can see right now at least seven lamps <laughs> and plants, and I can see at least yeah eight plants. <laughs> so and then boom, bouge. Specifically, one of the lamps is like the really old timey, tall, yeah, you know that, with the tassels yeah. on it. It's got like this beautiful ornate stem made Should out I of turn metal. It on? And... No, I like the dark. Why is it like darkness? Yeah. I wonder if people can hear us. How loud are we? Are do you know what's creepy? Do you know what's been creeping me out about this whole room this whole time? The ghost? This Voldemort looking motherfucker on yeah. the, the screen. Yeah, this the Netflix has paused on virtual meta retreat, the path to profound friendliness. And this is a guy. He looks like a Looks like Voldemort. Looks like a yeah. Wait. It kind of looks like he joined the Buddhist because he was going bold and losing all his hair. He's like, Well, if I join that group i'll look exactly oh like gosh. them because no, it kind of looks like he naturally lost his hair like that or he just must shave it every day he probably found enlightenment <laughs> yeah it looks like he shaved his eyebrows off too though like yeah is that what happens you get a rare achievement <laughs> shave <laughs> off everything everything anyway um the path to profound friend Friendness, friendly, friendliness. Oh, friendliness. I was gonna yeah. say it's like a new word, like this, unfriending someone. That's a new word they added after Facebook started. I think that's kind of a good word instead of saying like I fell out with him or I don't talk to him anymore. Just be like, no, I unfriended him. Well, no, if, no even joke. if you don't use Facebook. No jokes. This guy, this guy, Ajan Asana, is a real good, uh, uh, real good uh, Buddhist 
Buddhist speaker if you okay. if you want to listen to some Buddhists speak. I, Virtual I, meta yeah. retreat. Yeah. yeah. I like their message. I, I remember being on an airplane one time and I forget which one. It was, it was um, maybe Malaysia or somewhere. Anyway, they had... Yeah, it was Malaysia. That's right. Because they had this thing in the airplane pocket which had all the prayers you might say if the plane was going to crash. Oh, my God. In your um, religion. Oh, my God. Kind of like... um. And then many of them, many of the prayers were like, dear God, please keep this plane afloat. Keep us safe. You know, everybody got like a chance to like kind of showcase their their religion in yeah. about three sentences or, or so. Oh my God. Yeah, it was fucking amazing. And the, the, the most amazing thing for me was like that, that um, I think it was the Christian and the Muslim ones were like, don't, don't let this plane crash. And I was like, why would you even yeah. mention that? Don't even talk about the, the, the like, dear God, you know, keep us in the air. Don't let it crash. And then <laughs> the best one was the Buddhist one. Cause the Buddhist one just said simply the same thing. I guess they always say, which was wish uh, happiness to every being and creature on earth. Oh yeah. And I was like, That's oh so my sweet. God, you know, like I believe that too. Come on, you know, that's so you know, shit like oh, please don't make this plane crash and I'm gonna yeah. fly I don't trust science I don't <laughs> trust you I don't wanna die yeah I'm likely to die in a car crash on the way to the airport but yeah gotta the, pray man the statistics aren't right uh but it seems like just chill hope just, everybody's good <laughs> everybody I'm yeah. in the Mendervana <laughs> yeah Buddhism is beautiful Buddhism the, the Dharma the dharma what is does the dharma mean the teachings the teachings yeah the dharma of buddhism of yeah, buddha of buddha yeah but buddha was a guy yeah who was teaching the teachings and he called it buddhism after himself no no other people his just, disciples called it right buddhism, huh? because yeah. he was like i want to tell you about a little thing his name was his name wasn't buddha no, oh, it wasn't. No. Oh, but what people say the Buddha, and you think Siddhartha. it's like that fat guy sitting with Siddha his legs crossed. Siddhartha. Well, why do they? Oh, so, but they call it the Buddha, and isn't that him? Because I know in Buddhism, there's Buddha, there's Buddha. an actual person, but they don't worship that person. But there was the teacher. Buddha Siddhartha is the is the statue that you see everywhere. Okay. The, so the where's the connection? The fat one that you see is the traveler that came from India to Japan to teach Buddhism. No way. Yeah. Like in a cult? No. Like in the beginning when he had like a hundred people carrying him and he's like, check this out. And then the next people in the next village are like, okay. I think you have a massive misunderstanding of Buddhism. No, I mean religion. Like it has to start with one person. Buddhism is a, the a word. religion. That's my point. It wasn't one person spread. I spread totally word. did not get that point. Can you explain why? There is there is a type of Buddhism um, that is very religion based, but it's based in Tibet, and there's also uh, it's crossbred with their indigenous religion, and there's also a version of of Buddhism that's crossbred with an indigenous religion in Japan. Really? That's crossed with Shintoism. Ah, oh, Shinto's the older religion of Buddhism yeah. in Japan. Okay. No, 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 no. So, no, I mean it, it came first. Was yeah, the and then Buddhism was introduced and melded and with Shinto. Yeah, yeah, with Shintoism, and the same thing happened with That's him. That's crazy. All right, They're and all, Thailand, and they they never had wars over this. Like other religions, split oh, they and definitely. They fight. Oh, they definitely had wars. Did they? Oh, oh yeah. I thought totally. the Buddhists were like. No, don't kill. Don't, no, you know, there's extremists in every religion. Oh fuck, that sucks, right? There's a there's a story. They're always yeah. There's always their big thing is like we're not about violence. And then you look at the history of it. It's like, well, you've been in a lot of fights for a guy who says he doesn't like violence. Well, I mean, you've got the story of like the the mountain warriors, the monk mountain monk monk warriors. The, um, What's the point of meditating yeah, if you're just gonna get in a fight? Uh, there's a lot. Uh, it depends on 
the samurai meditated before they went into battle. They meditated. They meditated on the idea of, of um, of death, and what it meant to, like being cool with it. Like understanding that they could possibly die. You know that that was something that that was they were gonna they were gonna go through mm. and possibly in battle. So they wouldn't panic as much as maybe so someone would, who refused to think about it. Exactly. So they wouldn't panic. They would accept it. They would understand that it's a severe possibility. And they would focus on that. And it's still a type of meditation that's used in the business world today. To think that you're going to die. Well, not necessarily to die. They've been they've tweaked it. Like Musashi Miyamoto's Book of Five Rings is one of, has been one of the top ten books read by CEOs for the last like 15 years. Five Rings. The Five Rings. The book. The Book of Five Rings. Well, is that in any way connected to the Lord of the Rings? I wish. I really, <laughs> really wish that. Misogyny... How to be Gandalf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In five easy steps. Yeah, five, <laughs> five steps to being your best Gandalf. Be your best Hobbit. <laughs> um, There's an elf inside everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you better, you better get it out. Yeah. Um, well, who gets the gold? What's that? What is it called? The dwarves. The dwarves, yeah. Yeah. Dwarves dwarf 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 your way to a gold mine. Yeah. Oh, God. That sounds sexual. Like, I think the dwarves have got the worst personality out of that whole world or whatever. You, what do you call it? The universe. Oh, I love the dwarves. But they're just so greedy. They're all fo- all they do is focus on fucking living in a mine to mine gold. That's right? not true. Have you seen The Hobbit? Yeah. They're mining gold. That, that's yeah, their big that's thing. That's true. They, they do like gold. They're quite greedy. They're fucking obsessed by it. Yeah. And they so they choose to live like under I mean, it kinda makes sense like you've got a lot of gold, your people are always gonna be in food and drink. Yeah. Live underground. Yeah, like we're fucking rich as fuck. But you, the the payoff is you have to hide. Yeah, yeah, isolate, yeah. But you get to interbreed. Man, we should watch the <laughs> Hobbit. Oh, no way. I feel like it's like Taking the piss sometimes. It is bad. At points. Whereas Lord of the Rings is just like it's very great. true to the book. You it's look great. at like the yeah. even the costume details. If you read the book and you're like they had this type of material kind of shirt look like that. And then you look at the movie, you're like, Oh my god, they fucking read the book and they actually yeah. took so actually watching the film first is actually better for Lord of the Rings because yeah, you watch the film and then you read this massive and you've got this literary thing and you've already got all the characters' faces in your mind. Yeah, the images, and their clothes, yeah. and even if you don't understand what Tolkien's writing, you're like, I, I got it. Thanks to Peter Jackson, you know he's <laughs> Frodo, kinda... Frodo did a thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Frodo said the something. <laughs> Elijah Wood is sweating. I I would be down to watch The Hobbit regardless. It's, yeah, it's. It's we should, if we do that, we should film it and do a podcast because I was I've been taking the piss out of it constantly. <laughs> we should read the book before it first. Really take it. No, that would be like the super nerd podcast. Yeah, we gotta rip the shit out of the fucking Hobbit. We should definitely do a podcast where and feel free to feel free to give some feedback on this crowd. Uh, if fan, we should get yeah, one fan. Hey, Andy Kate. Yeah, uh, if we. <laughs> If we, um, if you heard that, say hi in the comments. If we, if we, like, <laughs> if you'd like, we could do a D and D podcast, a podcast of us playing D and D. Yeah, but it's, that would have to be like really obvious what's happening, like, because it's hard to even formulate what's happening in your mind when you're actually playing D and D. True, true. So how would you simplify the game of D and D to be like, yeah. okay, you, you're a wizard and you've got a wand, and you can shoot this one type of bullet. It's <laughs> like, it's quite. Yeah. So you better simplify it. No wizards. We can figure it out. Like you're a no. hobbit and you've got to kill an orc. Go. It's, no, it's just very descriptive. We just have to be very descriptive of everything that's okay. going on. Let's hear your, your, your dungeon master. Let's hear your description of an hobbit who decides to attack an orc with his bare hands and like gouge his eyes out and just like kill it. With a natural twenty, so um, let's say, you're, okay, you got it. So, the small curly-haired hobbit approaches the large, slobbering, grueling ogre. Is that what you said ogre? Orc. Orc. Um, he looks down. The orc looks down at the hobbit, 
He goes, what do you want, small one? And he, the hobbit, um, not flinching from that, stares straight back into the orc's eyes. He goes, you killed my wife. Your death is at my hand. Okay. Before he quickly grabs onto the orc's leg and begins to climb up the orc. He rolls a perfect acrobatics check, getting all the way up the orc to the orc's shoulder, grabbing onto his eyes, and with a perfect athletics check, he rips out the orc's eye. Blood squirting everywhere. The orc lets out a loud scream. Oh, what have you done? What is this? Uh, where are you? Get, get away from me. As the hobbit jumps down to the ground with a perfect flawless land. He rolls away with the eye tucked beneath his legs. Turning around only to pull a bow hidden beneath his cloak. Straight back at the orc. I give up. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Sorry, I get pretty demanding when it comes to numbers. Yeah, apparently. I just learned this. Anyway. Say the number 23. Say it. Say it. Say it. What's the What's the answer to the life's greatest question? 42? Yeah. Why does he say that anyway, Douglas? Adams? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm still very unconfirmed. I think that's the perfect age for humans to be. Hmm. Before you start dying, I mean. No, I mean, you start dying at 25 as a male. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. Well, no, yeah. 21 as a male, 25 as a female. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like you stop growing, you start. You know, yeah. Once you, once you reach your peak, your body starts changing and if, like you stop, yeah developing the same way kind of like this podcast maybe how long do you think we've been going now like maybe two hours at least i don't know we'll check or maybe at, a, at like a one no what are you talking about what a 20 so that means we were at our peak at like 15 minutes in or something <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and now we're like age what's the average that you, males live to all decay from here like 80, do we live to 84 80, 82 or i wanted to say like that's all we got yeah yeah so this podcast has kind of reached its um year 82 82 it's its 82nd year it's coming around the yeah. bend it so doesn't end it it doesn't want to make it to 90 we're gonna get what's that euthanasia oh yeah you know, so we can gonna, choose to end it instead of like it's dark this, yeah we're gonna like kill ourselves that's so dark but we've had a good run. That's the thing. We've got to be happy with it. We had a yeah. good run. Yeah. It's a great metaphor, really. For, for, you know. for saying goodbye to this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that you're dying and you want to kill yourself so you can um, end on a good note. Instead of suffering for the last, like, you know, 10 years, which would equate, like, yeah. another 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, but, Maybe it's uh, not that exact, but... Thank you for joining us on this last po- on this uh, last podcast we're ever going to do from the sounds of it. No, yeah. thank you for joining we're us dying. on this we're on the second podcast of the restarters. Reset, reset, reset. Restarters. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll hear you. No, you'll hear us next time. Yeah, don't call, call us. We'll call you. Call us too. That's fine. Call us. We miss you. Good night. Good night. Reset. 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 reset.